Welcome to the talk show, The Power of Women in Business, the show for international business women to get inspired with best practices and insights on how to scale up your business internationally. Your host is Tineke Rensen from Holland. She is well known for supporting female business owners to expand their business massively and internationally. Tineke is an international business expert for 28 years and is the author of the book, Maximum Business Growth for Women. It is time that women step up and create bigger businesses so that women can make a bigger impact in the world. Enjoy this powerful show as Tineke Rensen and her guest expert combine their brilliance in business to help you take your business to the next level. Gesture like I'd like to offer you something when you wear it, you feel what you Wow, oh, oh, thank you so much. <laughs> You okay, I will, I will send that uh, to you uh, later. I think we will have a lot to talk. So I already started the recording, but we will cut this off. Um, I have to make it full screen again. First of all, I will welcome the listeners. Then I will, uh, you could say hi or whatever, and then I will introduce you. So I will read your bio. I read it. It's beautiful. And then um, you can say whatever you like. And then we st I will start with the questions. Absolutely. Yeah. And I love the gymnast part. But I think we already knew that from each other, eh? that I was a gymnast too. Yes. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh. Let's start. Hi there, everybody. I'm so glad that you tuned in to yet another episode of the Power of Women in Business talk show, where we share valuable information about women doing business internationally. So hopefully to inspire you and to give you more knowledge to take that leap forward, or if you already do business internationally, get more creative ideas to expand your business even more. So today I have a guest who's born in Pakistan and she lives in Switzerland talking about international. Her name is Anila Hussain. Hi. Anila. Hi, hi. So Anila is driven by a strong business mindset since childhood. Anila, a national level gymnast, was raised in Karachi, the cosmopolitan fashion hub of the East. Having strong roots in the East, she's well aware of the challenges that a girl comes across in her life in the traditional societies. Armed with her sensitivity, Anila is now committed to using her Western education and free thought to help empower women around her. In partnership with her sister, she has created her fashion brand. Maybe you need to uh, help me here. Shenan's. Absolutely. Okay, good. Which is in the process of showcasing her East-West Modest Fusion Couture collection internationally with a deeper message of women emancipation and empowerment. Her presence in the world of fashion and glamour in Europe led to Shinans becoming an international brand. Wow, Anila, an international brand. So you are at the right place. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> that's, that's quite a lot. Born in a, in a completely different culture, then moved to a Western country, Switzerland. How did that happen? Um, well, it's a very long story. Um, I got married. Well, first of all, hello to everyone and thank you for listening. Thank you, Teneke, for inviting me over. And I'm really thrilled because I think it's important uh, from woman to woman how we can connect with each other and how we can really inspire and uplift each other mm -hmm. to move forward. So my story basically started when I grew up in Karachi. Um, in a middle class family, upper middle class family, I would say, having an old elder sister and two younger brothers. And being brought up in that culture, I always felt I was inferior because of my darker skin and also uh, being a girl, most importantly. So my family never uh, put the pressure of uh, how is she going to get married and who is going to marry her. So we, as children, boys or girls, we all received uh, the quality education and mm -hmm. also the love, the unconditional love from our parents. And my father and my mother, they both had a vision uh, that raising a girl is raising a community. 
Wow. And keeping that in mind, we he always worked hard so that the children's education uh, could be benefited. And uh, through them, uh, it could create more ripple effects wherever they live in this world. And by saying so, we I went to school and to college and university. And uh, in the first year of my university, uh, doing my business studies, uh, in my culture, girls really get married very early, uh, 19, 20 maximum. So I got married at the age of 20, 21 in the mid. And my husband was only 24. And he came from Switzerland to Geneva as well too. Karachi, and he was looking for a girl from his traditional, uh, from the traditional background. Actually, we didn't know that I'm going to get married to this man, and I will be living in Switzerland one day because my father never wanted children to go outside and to be in, in, in nearby him. And well, it wasn't my destiny. So I arrived in Switzerland after getting married in 2002. And instead of bringing with me the dowry, the clothes, and the jewelry. I brought with me self-esteem and my self-confidence mm. that my father gave it to us when we were growing up. And that's the thing which helped me and is helping me every day to move forward and take anything or any risk in my life. I'm a mother of three children. I have two teenagers, 15 and almost 13, and I have a daughter, 10 years old. And keeping that in mind, I always wanted to do something which... I'm passionate about, which I live every day, and I can take actions, more meaningful actions every day through my daily course. And I, when I came here, uh, there was a school very close by, which was uh, a Montessori school. Mm -hmm. And my father said, well, you speak English, why don't you join? And uh, because at that time, I used to live with my parents-in-law, because in our culture, we live with the families yeah. and all. And for me, it was it was a normal thing. It was very organic to come from a big family and to live with, with a family as well. And uh, it went really well. Everything, well, like I started working in a monastery school and I was working full time and I didn't know my worth at that time being a teacher, being a qualified English teacher. Uh, and I was just receiving, I w and I'll be very honest with you all, I was receiving three to 400 francs a month. I'm talking back in 2002. And I was very happy at that time and I was feeling like, wow, I'm getting 400 francs back in Pakistan. It's a lot of money. I'm going to do this. And, and my husband didn't tell me that, hello, you're not getting enough money. You don't know what your worth is. And he said, well, she is going to learn with her own experiences. Wow. So trust, me, trust me, I worked there for three years and my husband didn't say a word. He said she is going to learn. She, he just told me. Anila, be careful what you're doing. You, I know that you're passionate about your teaching and everything, but find out what you're doing and what you would like to do more. And I worked there for three years. And after completing my uh, monastery diploma with her, she paid for my education there. And she said, well, uh, of course, you know, I was very happy that she's paying for my education and everything uh, to continue my monastery uh, education in Switzerland. But after finishing my degree uh, in here in Geneva, I came to know it is not recognized in Switzerland. Oh. And it is something which was a bluff. And mm. I, I had uh, my second child was about to be born and I was like uh, going up and down on the mountains and everything. <laughs> but it was, um, but we live in Switzerland. So I found it's, it's still okay. I'm not in Pakistan. So, uh, I mean, going up and down or, or being pregnant, it wasn't a problem because uh, at that time I was not driving. So I passed my driving test with my second son I was pregnant with my second son. So by saying so, I said, okay, I will not give up. If I didn't get the diploma, I spent the money, uh, of course, on all the logistics. I started again my another degree in 2010. Mm -hmm. That is called the uh, Educa um, Association Montessori International, which is the headquarters in, in Amsterdam, in the Netherlands. And I went for that. In the meantime, while I was doing my education in 2010, I was still working in different monastery schools, creating, networking with parents, with children, because I'm, I, I create close connections with children for us. I mean, it's, it's something, it's in me. I mean, I love mm. to work with people when I connect more powerfully. And that always helped me to create a network around me. And when I did my second AMI uh, diploma in Switzerland again, of course, uh, at that time was very tough for me because my husband had uh, his, his health issues and I was feeling like how I'm going to finish my studies and if I'm unable to do it, I won't get a job another time. But in the meantime, I always had in my mind um, 
a little uh, the vision that my sister and I created back in 2004 to launch something on our own. Um, and did it was she, was your sister with you in Switzerland too, or was she still back in Pakistan? in Pakistan? My whole family, my sister, okay. and my brothers, they are in Pakistan, except one who has just moved to UK. And while I was here and I was doing my studies and my ups and downs and challenges were going on, I always had at the back of my mind that my dream that I saw when I was eight years old, what about that? How I'm going to live that dream? Uh, uh, because I told you that uh, we were in a very educated and a very top class school in Pakistan. Yeah. But after, and, what, and what was your dream when you were eight? When I was eight, it was my dream to do something for the woman, uh, like my mother, who is always like at home and working and cooking and everything. But what about her dream? So the woman, like my mom, who is my inspiration, and the children whom I used to see outside at school. So it, my, my dream is something which is about fashion and education. So I'll come to that as well. Um, but the empowerment, when I use the word empowerment, is actually we empowered ourselves as girls growing up in that society uh, within, I mean, in a, in a, in a um, uh, family members of like 15, 16 people living in the same house. So we have to save our own identity, yep. our own, uh, everything. And and we, we move forward with our a vision of how we can connect East and West because my family is in Pakistan, I'm in Switzerland. How can I bridge this gap with my dream, with my passion and everything? So I reconnected with my sister. Uh, we, of course, I was I'm always connected with her, but mm -hmm. reconnected for my vision. Uh, how to build something which can connect to cultures, to continents, yep. Yep. And to mindsets. And the brand Shanans came up which is Shanila, my sister's name, and Anila is my name. So okay. it's a fusion of two names, two mindsets, two identities, and uh, two passions. When I call two passions is uh, fashion from my sister side and education is from my side. Mm -hmm. so yeah, definitely. Under one umbrella. And uh, to, to come, we, we launched that brand in 2000 and I would say 12. Um, but we were working from 2004, so it's a long journey yeah, yeah, yeah. we started uh, working on. And uh, by the time she finished her fashion designing and I finished uh, my styling and education and everything in Switzerland, we created that brand and we launched in, uh, in Pakistan, of course, which is my, my country, and um, in Switzerland, where I live. And then also in UK, so we are uh -huh. in three countries. And okay, and can, can, I, can I ask you, how did you organize the launch? In, for example, in London, because you were not living there, how did you do that? With which partners? Interesting, because I'm very much onto social media and I have done it all by myself, not like taking someone's help, because I know people, when they know you don't know something, they try to like either rob you yeah. or take out some more money on you. And, and I said, okay, I'm going to try to do by myself. So what I did, I created an Instagram page and Facebook page and, and just a very normal page. And I started posting up things and inspirational quotations and, and things like that. And I started using hashtags. By using hashtag woman empowerment, I met someone interestingly on a platform, a Women Economic Forum in, back in January 2017. Uh, who's called Savita Kai from House of Icons. And she came up to me because we were both speakers and she said, uh, oh, I'm following you and I know that uh, you are in fashion. Would you like to land into the London Fashion Week event? Ah, okay. And, and I was very much excited because we just had launched our thing and I said, oh, how are we going to do it? Who's going to be, you know, how are we going to finance and everything? But then somehow everything worked out because we know that it was aligned to our vision. We knew the why we're doing it and for what purpose. And we had just, I think, three months to prepare our collection and launch and everything. And on top of that, my sister had to take the visa because she lives in Pakistan. So she needs to have the business visa or, or work visa yeah. and everything. But everything was organized. Everything was like putting in place the dots. Beautiful. And we landed uh, the first time it was September 2017. And it was the collection based on women empowerment. So the collection was orange and black, which was like a flame of a candle. Yeah, okay. And, and that every time we create something, we keep a woman in our mind. We know why, what are the hopes of a woman? What are the fears? And what is she, her dream? So as my sister and I, we both pulled up us 
together, helping each other, motivation, motivated each other, saying that nothing is impossible. If we don't have finances, how we are going to generate? If we don't have network, what we are going to do? Very and good. With mindful people doing meaningful work because I'm also part of one of the uh, wonderful platform which is called EBBF. It's called. Can EBBF. can you uh, repeat that? E uh, E B B F. Ethical business building friends. Okay. Building the future. You can say, and it is an international platform. Uh, so let me, I mean, also I'd like to share that I'm not part of like uh, multiple platforms because I cannot put my energy into no, different platforms. No. I really want to know where I am, how I can help others and how maybe others can collaborate with me. So one, one is EBBF. The second is WEF, which is Women Economic Forum, where we both met. Yeah, we met in Amsterdam. I was, in Amsterdam. Like, like nothing is a coincidence, we ended up, the two of us on the table, having lunch together. And, Absolutely. you know, I th you were wearing your, uh, your, your fashion brand, and yes. I was intrigued because you looked so, like, you looked like a princess. You looked so beautiful oh, in your you. dress. <laughs> Thank you. That's a, that's a compliment. Thank you so much. Uh, I think we need to wear what uh, we start Definitely. With and that yeah. represents who we are. And we need to look unique because everyone has certain uniqueness in them. And it's how you carry yourself is your is your image. Mm -hmm. So this is... And, and the third one, I would say, is uh, OWIT, which is a woman uh, organization of women in international trade. So these are the three platforms I'm very closely connected to. And through these platforms, I found clients, I found people who would, who would like to collaborate for my fashion business or my education project for both. And also, I've launched into London Fashion Week twice, and I'm preparing to launch uh, our brand in New York, which is Fashion for Development. Wow. Uh, hopefully, inshallah, very soon. So we are and how, how did you get that connection? It's through She Trades, uh, the ITC. Uh, ITC is in Geneva, and uh, it's international uh, trade center. So I got connected with She Trades, which really want to promote women in trade by 2030, and they're working a lot on that. And uh, trust me, it's like going into the conferences or uh, these kind of platforms. It's really how you take the best out of it, not like to, not by only sharing cards, but how you can. Uh, I mean, you know just by taking a card and, and follow up with them and to say like what we can do together or if not, maybe someone else could be working yep. with each other. So this, uh, this is how I got connected and, and moving forward. Beautiful. So that, 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 that's a lot of great uh, tips that you're sharing, specifically the networks that you're part of. Would you say uh, they, they could be for every woman, uh, woman or is it for women in fashion? Uh, the she trades one is not. It's mostly for women in trade because yep. those who are like doing international trade or national trade. I'm, uh, but there are a, like I connected with someone on the she trades platform who has nothing to do with trade, and she is highly connected in the education department. So we never know with yep. whom we bump into. And um, I was because the only reason she got connected with me because I stood in front of four hundred people and took the name of Pakistan. And she was from Pakistan. Wow. And yeah. she was like, wow, if she's taking the name of Pakistan on this biggest platform, she has something to say. And that's how I got connected. So these platforms, sometimes we never know what we get yeah. out of it. And uh, EBBF is something which is a global platform. So I started my uh, my project actually there because I, I found a mentor there. Uh, there's a uh, the community of people who are helping each other without like asking for money. Yeah. So it is, uh, and uh, my, my mentor is from Germany that she helped me. Now I have another fashion mentor from, from Chicago. So she's also giving me the tidbits, like how I should be doing it, what I should be doing it. I knew why. So how is always like we need to learn how to do it. Yeah, I love that you say that you uh, have mentors because I think that's very, very smart. It's a shortcut to... Uh, to save you from a lot of uh, failure and mistakes and, 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 and wasted money. So, yeah, good. Well, you know, really good tips. Uh, I haven't heard them of anybody. She trades. I'm definitely going to have a look at it because I am looking for business partners in different countries too. So uh, thank you for, uh, for that uh, tip. Now, about your brand, what does it stand for? Uh, my brand, Shanann, stands for Women Empowerment, and it stands for all those women who have certain uniqueness in them, and they want to bring that uniqueness out and the confidence out of them. So 
it is it is it's a it's a luxurious um, high end couture brand. So it's one to one that we work with clients. It's not uh, we don't go for quantities. We go for the quality, and we want to make it. Even if it's a high end luxurious couture brand, we want to make it affordable for women so that the uh, whatever they wear. They look unique and they feel unique and more confident. Mm -hmm. So basically, it's the hopes, as I said, the fears of a woman and the dream of a woman. Wow! And what 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 kind of values do you portray through your uh, project of fashion and education? You've already said something that uh, fashion and education. So education is your. Um, where, where you really are passionate about your sister the um, the fashion. fashion now you bring those two together what is uh, what is what does the education stand for in your uh, values the education mostly um, I am a monastery qualified teacher so for me is like how I can bring the children up was equipped with the moral values uh, something that would help them to, ha uh, to have better future, not for themselves, for the future generations. Mm -hmm. So, uh, monastery is uh, is pedagogy that I am bringing in the in environments like in underprivileged areas in Pakistan. In Pakistan, there are people, there are schools who have written the name monastery, but actually it's not working as monastery. Mm -hmm. So the pedagogy is really how uh, I'll just say it in one line: help me to help myself. That's the 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 main thing, the holistic uh, picture of uh, Maria Monastery, who is the, the founder of uh, this pedagogy back in Italy, 1907. And she started this pedagogy with this under um, children with special needs. So she was thinking that if, if this pedagogy can work with um, the children with special needs or handicapped children, this can also work with the normalized children. Normalized means the, uh, the children that have less special needs. We all have certain kinds of needs in us. Yeah. So um, that's why I, because I am, I didn't know, I just realized after when I started this project that I was in a monastery school when I was, I was like going to a monastery school in my son when my father was looking for schools. So, you know, that the little seed was already in my mind that I'm going to do the same thing for others because I have benefited myself and that's how I've raised my confidence. One thing I'd like to share with the woman in, with the, in Pakistan who will listen or anywhere around the world, Tineke, is when I was growing up, I was 13 years old. And if I didn't have the confidence or the self-esteem in me, I wouldn't have said no to one of my uncles in Pakistan who had tried to abuse me, mm. thinking that I'm a girl. Yeah. And I was living at my grandmother's house. One thing when I told my grandmother early morning, she said, oh, uh, no, no, it's okay, because she was afraid what's going to, what everyone's going to say, what will happen to her, and what will my father say to my grandmother, all those kind of things. Yeah. But I said, well, my grandmother's not doing anything, my aunt didn't do anything, I have to stand up for my right. I have wow. to say no. 13 years. Yeah. 13 years, very young, and I was just growing up and everything. And the second time he tried, because I was... 90% at my grandmother's house. I love my, my uh, cousins and everyone. And we were all in a very big family there. And immediately when I said no to that guy, he was like, oh, how can she say that to me? Or what is going to happen now if she's going to say to everyone? And that was the day he, he never touched me again. Good. And I'm... I'm Still working, you know, there are things that I feel like uh, and, uh, I'm a woman, it shocks me sometimes. That's why I'm working also for the child abuse prevention program in Pakistan and in Switzerland to, to create awareness amongst children as well. So that uh, is, you know, uh, when, I, when I come on that, my passion, my, my blood starts gushing up and down because I live and I want to do things more and more and connect more parents, caretakers, and everyone. But keeping that, so I also knew that because I am into this fashion world and how fashion is going, I mean, you know fashion industry, how uh, the fashion revolution started uh, uh, from this uh, in incident that happened in Bangladesh, uh, and I'm part of this fashion revolution team. So I said, how I would just connect these two Maybe not. Together. Maybe not everybody knows about this incident, and it seems, it seems important. I believe a whole factory was... Uh, Yes. And there were more than 200 people, uh, women, including men, and they were, they were, I mean, of course, they were killed. And since, until from there onwards, uh, it would happen in Bangladesh, Rana Plaza event. And then people uh, know actually that who made my clothes. And yeah. The, 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 
the consciousness of uh, where it is sourced from, where the, uh, the cloth is coming from and everything. And that's why a fashion brand stands for like, of course, all the values, the ethics and how we can save the environment. That's why we are not really going for like bigger quantities because we want bigger money, but we are going for uh, more values and we stand for that. We have a cutoff. We know that we cannot, we don't want to go beyond that. And that's what we, who we are. And if there is something that comes up, I always discuss with my partner. This is an opportunity coming. What do you think? And then we work together with it. But we never go or undermine our values because it's cheaper in China. So that let's go there. People won't know about it. And that's why clients come to us because they believe in... Yeah, and, and you know, and that's why I also really want to give a platform to women and why I love working with them, connect women, have a women's network for business women because this is so true what you say this is typically how women do business it's never for the short term it's never for the quick win it's never for big uh, big wins okay that can uh, the last one can be part of it but it always has to be from their core belief what is good how can I serve? How can I help? You know, okay. most women are like that. And that's why, you know, my mission is to help women create bigger businesses because then, you, you know, things like, like in politics and in corporate uh, businesses, things will change when women uh, have bigger businesses Absolutely. or are in politics or are in the boardroom. Yeah. yeah. So you, you have a lot of plans for the future. What are future projects? The future project is definitely to land in the Milan Fashion Week and uh -huh. uh, the New York Fashion Week. So and Paris? Pardon? Paris? Paris? Paris, yes. We have contacts from Paris. Like I've been to Who's Next and also uh, like uh, uh, these trade fairs that happens. So I find really good contacts. If I go for one day, I know how much time I need to spend and what I really need to take out of it is really to manage your time because we I cannot stay for like three days if I know, but what in one day I'm going to do and come back the same day. So it's really like power pack day sometimes, but it is fulfilling. When I come back, I feel fulfilled that I, uh, I and it's okay if I didn't stay for three days or maybe uh, uh, if I didn't attend the Paris Fashion Week maybe for five days but if I attend it for three, three, three days or two days or two hours what did I what did I do to make an impact and what did it bring to me or to my fashion business yeah exactly so you want to launch in more countries yes. but I, I usually uh, I vary you know sometimes I plan uh, one day for an event but sometimes I also plan uh, a day and I fly back the, le the next day at the end of the day and I have no meetings. But because, you know, you meet so many people uh, and, and I always have space free for the unexpected and for meetings that can occur so that you can immediately start to get people to know better. So that's usually how I do it. But I can understand when you're, uh, when you're really busy and you need to go back into the business. So, because is it you and your sister, or do you also um, employ people? Yes, uh, my sister who is based in Karachi, so she, we have a workshop uh, with uh, 10 men, and we are working with a foundation for better life there, where women, we employ women from there who are being either abused in the textile industry, fashion industry, or other, other areas, and we hire them, uh, first of all, we groom them, and we sell them, like, of course, building their confidence up, and then we engage them either in our own work, like for embroidery or stitching or anything, yep. and we train them for that, and if they say or oh, our interest is more into education or technical part or maybe other things then we connect them to the place so that they are not bound to stay with us but they just build up their confidence so we we want to bring a fine gender balance uh, and a work to also accomplish one of the sdg goals uh, but this was not even i didn't know about these sustainable goals when we had this idea yeah. before like it's very much common now and it's fashion like SDG goals and all those things but these were the values we had even before we started all those things gender equality why and women empowerment why because empowering women more I think is we should empower men in order that women are empowered already naturally if the men they let them come and we work very closely with men and we ask them you know uh, would your wife would like to join us he said no 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 she has to stay at home with the children I said yeah but your children can also go to monetary school and you know we create a better life for your family and we always 
talk to them in a way because we, we, we are like a family. Our, our community of workers are like a family. Whenever we create a design, we always like to show them, okay, so what do you think about that? And they say, oh, but why are you asking us, madam? It's your work. But I said, you are the one who creating with us. So we cannot take all the value for us. And um, I must say that when we came up, uh, came down from this London Fashion Week, this ramp thing, I, we called our workers and said, thank you. It's because of you we landed here. Yeah. We couldn't have made it possible. Of course. And that keeps our family of uh, workers very intact. Because in Pakistan or any other part of the world, if you give better money or better salary, they go there. But we create a vision with our team is where you want to see yourself in three years of time. Do you want to stay here and work for 10, 20 years? Or do you want to build up your own thing with your family and move forward? So the leadership skills, we also uh, teach them so that they're not bound with us. And, um, and I think that's what, you know, as uh, leaders or as women, we should be doing. We are helping each other to go up rather than like, oh, she should not take my worker. Or what will happen if this woman would go there and tell what we are doing? We are never afraid of our bread and butter we we will get it from anywhere i'm never afraid who's going to copy our designs and i remember i was at one of the events where i was doing my pop-up and some of the friends came up and they were trying to see my designs from here and there because i know they're into the fashion business and i said well take a look take photos and they were like, mm. Because I know we believe in our quality, we believe in our work, and we believe in our values so much that she cannot produce that. And whatever she can put the money in, but those core values would not be there. True. So that's why I'm not, not afraid of... Uh, you know, this is the essence of building, of, of business, and the essence of why you should never be afraid of competition. When Absolutely. it's about your values, about your passion, about your story, nobody can copy that. Absolutely. And, yeah, Absolutely. I totally agree. There's enough in this world for everyone, I think. <laughs> I, I, I totally agree. Yeah, I never believe in competition. And, you know, I cannot work with women if, if they are suspicious and if they, want, if they do believe in competition. I always want to see, you know, where's your uniqueness and, yeah. and where's your value and how can you monetize that? Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. We, we can talk uh, for hours and, you know, usually I, I ask a lot of questions, but you have so much to, uh, to talk about. And um, wow. Is, is, is there one more last thing that you would like to add to the conversation or you would like to ask our audience? Then now is your time. Yes, I would just say maybe one thing how I started and empowered each other as women or sisters, I would say one thing that I really say, some people say, follow your dreams. But if I say you follow your inner self, the dreams would follow you. And they have, there's no way you won't be able to fulfill if you have a will and you find a way. Mm. Take risk in your life. Take imperfect actions in your daily life every day. Imperfect actions, yeah. Life. <laughs> actions I take every day and on top of that being a mother I involve my children around so I don't feel a burden if I'm traveling no. or if I'm doing work from home or from anywhere else they know what my mom is doing and why is she doing what she's doing yeah that's very important for us as um as, as business owners I would say because yeah. we all have families I totally so, agree yeah, yes. totally agree. You know, but it gets hard. Uh, I just got back from uh, Switzerland yesterday. I was at a, at a women's expo in Zurich. I saw your photos. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but my daughter had a jaw surgery on Friday, and I left on Saturday, and it turned out bad, and she was home on her own. Now, she's 18, but still, you know, those are the moments that traveling is really not nice. But, yeah, we, we do have to... Um, Cope with that. Uh, yes. Yeah. The other thing, yeah, and, and to be there at the actual present moment, and sometimes you're you're stuck as mother as well. I know. It's uh, yeah. <laughs> where where we are? What should? What is my priority? What should I be doing? But if your um if your inner conscious says that you're doing something right, I think we should go for it. And yeah. The universe or everything would put things together in place. That's but def definitely. Do, do you need any help with your projects? Uh, is, is, if, if women are interested to know what you do, for example, in Pakistan? 
Well, here what I do in Geneva, if people would like to connect with me in Geneva, is like private consultancies. Uh, I go to their houses, I see their wardrobes, and I try to create something which they already have in their wardrobes. For example, they have millions of scarves, or maybe 10 of scarves. So we change that scarf uh, to another scarf, or use that thing in their garment somewhere. And the leftover piece is going to be used for the clothes for the children in Pakistan. Oh. So it will be a meaningful uh, connection from your garment to another. You're, you're connecting it's a beautiful exchange. Uh, we are saving the environment, and also at the same time, uh, we are uh, we are working for creating this place a better world for everyone through fashion and through education so maybe the woman would like to have any consultancy of styling tips or or anything that i could be helpful for i would be most glad to do it in switzerland in pakistan or i travel around uh, anywhere where it's needed because i always believe in making connections with people and relationship with people and not like going through online and and uh, uh, those kind of things and secondly is for the education definitely if you have any contact in different schools would like to give some supplies or uh, something uh, which they like to connect uh, to the project in Pakistan because it is in a sorry in a very underprivileged village uh, where there's a community of Hindus and Muslims and we are trying to combine two communities together to mm. So this is what, and it is everything is on a monastery based uh, monastery based pedagogy. So these are the two things. Uh, so fashion is more for styling, consultancies, and if you want to work with me for your hopes, fears, and dreams, I'm there to help you around. And then if you want to work or maybe help around for the education, uh, it's it's it would be more and more meaningful. Yeah. Wow. So ladies. <laughs> Be, be, be a member of those international networks. I am definitely going to check them out because I've, I've heard it made a big difference for, for you. And now you can repeat this all the time. If you want to launch in Paris, you go to your network, uh, you have a look. And you know, maybe I didn't tell you that, but I also have a network. I have a network for business women in Switzerland, in Zurich, in, in the Netherlands. We're launching now in uh, London to, to do exactly the same. Uh, connecting women, uh, helping uh, businesses internationally. So, and and you are a perfect example of that this is the way it works. So, Absolutely. Anila, Absolutely. thank you. Yeah. I think it's also very important at the last minute to give like call to action is when I said taking imperfect actions is also when you don't have money, you can also take imperfect actions. You don't wait that you have money in your pocket and then you're going to launch something. That would follow. You just... Yeah. 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 Money would come. But, but exactly, but you know, this is a thing that women do need. They need this kind of boldness. They like to be in control, otherwise they get scared. And in control means that they need to know all the steps. But it's, it's about making a decision. I am going to launch three months time from now in London. We have nothing. What are we going to do? Step one. Okay, step two. We have no money. We have faith. We have faith. It will come at the right time. You know, and, and that, that takes a lot of courage, having the faith. But yeah, I, you showed that beautifully. So I hope the women can see that this is something that works. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much for giving me this time and opportunity to connect with your network and with you. Jennifer. Yeah, good. So will you be at the Women Economic Forum in London in November? Yes, I will okay. be there. And me also too. I'm going to Birmingham in July, hopefully. So that would be... All right. Yeah. So we'll, we'll, we'll meet definitely again, if not in Switzerland, then at least in, uh, in London uh, in uh, fall. So thank you so much for your uh, contribution, uh, Anila, with all the valuable tips and with sharing your personality and how you do business. It's such a perfect example of how women are in business. So I, I loved it. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Tineke. Thank you.